I saw this cool idea for a retroflective street cone material in a tweet and wondered how it would work in Blender. The same reflective property here also applies to street signs, protection wear, cat eyes, cat eyes and this weird example from Wikipedia where the retroflection comes from dewdrops. When you shine a light onto retroflective material, it reflects directly back at you, giving it that signature glow. But wait, what's the difference to regular reflection? Basically, retroflective material even throws back light if the surface isn't perfectly aligned to your eyes. Take a look again at the street cone. Only an infinitely slim slice of that cone would actually be perfectly aligned to reflect light back into your eye. Everything further to the side would deflect the rays away. A little flawed comparison would be looking at the cone, cutting out the area where the retroflective material is applied and placing a perfectly aligned mirror there, so the reflection is de-skewed in a sense. That, combined with some roughness, creates a retroflective effect. In real life these materials are a bunch of parabolic mirrors or concave diamond shapes and it is somewhat impossible to have an actual perfect retroflection since there's always some negative space in between the elements. If you watch closely you can see the tiny elements under the surface of a cat eye reflector. In Blender we can achieve perfect retroflection and it requires only one note. We will take our standard material and make it metallic and zero the roughness for a mirror finish. The normal input tells the shader which direction the surface points to, to calculate shading and reflection. If you plug in a normal output from a geometry info, nothing changes, because we are feeding the correct and expected normal data from the surface into the shader. This imaginary standard node is always connected here even if nothing is plugged in. I can manipulate these normals and, within limits, trick Blender into thinking that our object has a different surface than its actual geometry. That is also how bump and normal maps work, by pretending the surface has a different shape. I hope that sheds some light on the normal input for at least someone. We can put something else here, and that is the direction you are looking at the surface from. If we imagine a ray between your eye and the surface, and tell that surface, here, this is actually your normal, it will say, okay, and reflect light back at you. And that is what comes out of the incoming output. If connected, right away you can see a difference in the reflection, mainly a removal of the curvature of the surface. Let's bring it into Blender. Here we have a street cone with our mirror material on the reflective stripes. Let's turn off the lights and get a point light between us and the object. Now I will increase the roughness a bit and it starts to glow. Unfortunately it does not look very good once I move the light away, as there is no underlying material, leaving us with a black void. So actually I will start with a standard PBR setup, got some color maps, roughness, normals etc. and I will add the retroflective glow on top. For this I use a slightly rough glossy shader and use an add shader node. It will add, so brighten, everything non-black on top of our PBR material. Now it looks retroflective and also works in the dark. You can change the intensity of the retroflection by darkening the glossy color. I will also take my underlying image texture with this diamond pattern and plug it into the roughness of the glossy shader, a color ramp to tweak it a bit and now even in retroflection mode it has some texture to it. Now eyes are even simpler. I use an image from Google and put it on the UV sphere using UV projection. The iris section of an eye is actually a bit more parabolic like this. I will make the pupil black and assign a copy of our material where I want it to reflect, the iris section. Put all of that in a second sphere with a glass material if you want, but better use cycles if you do that and you want it to look good. Now the edge shader, the glossy node and the incoming normals. If you want to make sure your iris doesn't look washed out in regular light conditions, just connect the eye image into the glossy color also. You can use curves or whatever if you still want to influence the brightness. Very spooky indeed. Now the easy part. Model a monster around that eye. Track it into a shot. Definitely the correct order to do things when making monsters. Mm -hmm.